So we talked before around those two key pieces around how do we actually, now we know, we've brought in, we're going to modernise, we're going to uh, a data state to, to Azure, how do we actually do it? Um, and so we talked about that assessment and then the migration and then the optimization pieces. This is now going a little bit deeper. So with that pre-migration, this is where we want to understand, or you want to understand your own you know, database assets. You know, how many SQL servers do you have got? How many are in use of production? How many you don't didn't know you had um, and maybe weren't being managed, uh, which is another common scenario we see as we've had that shadow IT uh, happen in, um, uh, across organizations. Um, and then how do we assess those workloads? Now you've narrowed that down, know what your um, data state looks like, how do you assess and uh, are they ready for moving to a, a modern version of SQL or to a cloud SQL service um, and, and fixing recommendations that might be in there. Um, and then at that time, we might need to do some, some um, remediation in terms of the conversion around the schemas, the target environment, uh, and it may not be required in all cases. It was looking at migration as well. Um, this is a two-part process. We want to migrate the schema across first um, to make sure that all the uh, objects are set up correctly and then the data comes across after. If you're not doing a online migration um, and, and um, there's some SARS that you require to do online migration, um, then how do you minimize the downtime? Maybe there's a data sync point that you need to to keep that um, source and destination servers up to date and then a cut over from its source to the target system as well. Now, of course, you would test that before you go straight to a full cut over situation, um, but in a post migration, you're still going to, you know, to remediate applications. There'll be some core remediation activities you would have picked up from the testing, but you'll need to change application connection strings. There might be other features that you haven't hit uh, as part of your testing um, that may rely on something that wasn't triggered in the, in the testing process. So just be aware of that. Or well, try and get your tests as, as complete as you can during that testing process. But uh, invariably, there will be something that gets run uh, every, only every now and again that may not be picked up or as part of the common use scenarios. So just be aware of that. Um, you know, performance testing is important as well. You can simulate performance testing into, in, in the pre cutover. Uh, it usually requires a bit of investment in time uh, and, and, and organizational effort to do that in earnest. But if you do have the luxury of, of being able to do that, uh, do that, which is good, and keep it and then manage that and fine tune the service parameters to make sure you can run your environment uh, uh, in performance. performance. Um, um, again, clients try and use a smaller tier potentially sometimes, a SQL service. So they, they get sort of caught out when they haven't actually finding some bottlenecks in there. And sometimes there's query optimization as well that um, comes to head where you can actually optimize your query running on a lower a lower spec Azure service for, for SQL and then optimize that going forward which to ties in performance improvements as well. Um, I'm not going to touch on, you know, go into details about the app modernization. We have a whole other you know, program around app infrastructure modernization also, but this is really to highlight that, you know, databases are intrinsically linked to applications. Um, and, and it's important we don't shy away from that because um, it's very easy to go, let's just move the SQL across, but forget how will the application work? Uh, is it set up to work uh, as, you, as you move that? And if you're running bespoke applications, uh, there's the app service migration assistant you can use that might be able to take a .NET application uh, through to the uh, Azure app service. Um, or the other scenarios we can you know, mod, um, do a, a moderation of the VMs for those bespoke um, bespoke or off the shelf vendor provider applications as well. Um, but as we keep in mind as we think about what we're how we're migrating. So the tools, so a range of tools available to us. So many um, uh, look at the uh, data migration system, which is the DMA in here, and the data uh, as part of an assessment. And we'll do a migration using the Azure Database Migration Service. Um, and they'll give you a flavor of um, how to assess and, and migrate um, an Azure SQL, um, on premises SQL database up to Azure. And I'll talk about some of the tools at the end because there wasn't a lot of guidance online, but I've kind of wrapped it up on a slide to help you think about how to where, when and what use what you when and how you might use some of those tools. So let's just jump in to the assessment demo. So I have pre-recorded this because um, just to sh shorten the speed and the time we've got today. Um, now I'm just going to hit the uh, the play button. We'll get into it. And I'll pause as we need to. But I've got in my development environment um, the AdventureWorks database 
on my uh, on my device on my machine here. And this is what we're going to take up into into Azure. So we're going to use the first of the assessment using the data migration assessment tool. Um, I'm not going to do a migration with this. I'll explain why in a moment. But let's put the project name in here um, for the uh, uh, to do the assessment. So the AdventureWorks project. It's target going to a SQL, Azure SQL database from a SQL server. Um, the report we're going to do is going to look for database compatibility and feature parity as well. So we'll kick that off. I need to give it a destination server. Um, so, uh, well, sorry, source server in this case, which is the, my local development machine. So this is running uh, on my development machine, this, this tool. So I'm going to the cloud at this stage. I'm just running it locally, but it knows what type of destination I want to go to. Um, I'm going to start the assessment. This is, this is only about a 300 meg database, so it's quite, quite quick. So I'm just going to pause this here. Uh, if I can hit the uh, pause button with my mouse. Apologies. Uh, it's worked in the uh, rehearsal. <laughs> Let me uh, take off the... Uh, I love how... The pause. Good. No. Uh, hit the right key. They change the keys in the latest version of PowerPoint. So there's a laser pointer now, sort of the pause button. So with the control P, the control space is the key. So we looked at um, the SQL Server feature parity uh, problems before, and we saw there was, if you, did, if you was, missed it, there was um, information around uh, like the uh, security uh, and, and, and the scoping of security credentials or at the server level or the database level. And just says you've got a warning, so you need to think about this as you move that forward. So you need to, to check that. Um, in terms of compatibility issues in here, the full text search has changed to SQL Server 2008. So it's going to, it's warning us saying that this has changed. Now in my application, I might be quite comfortable to say, well, we don't use full text search um, where it's going to be fine, not a problem. Or I might need, I know I need to use it, I might need to remediate that as well. So um, continue on with this. Um, that's really, the, I guess, the basis for the assessment. So it checks for new compatibility, um, you know, migration blockers. So if there are migration blockers in there, um, they are things that will stop you from moving uh, at all into a, a modern version of SQL. And if we were doing a, um, uh, a lift and shift or, you know, to a VM, an IaaS, um, uh, and, and upgrading to a new version of SQL, um, which you do through through this tool, and, and um, then that's you can continue to upload as you migrate and continue on. But we're not doing an up. Of this day, I was not doing an upgrade. I'm not going to a VM, so I'm going to use uh, the, uh, another tool, database migration service. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Let's repeat that one and look at how we might do this with the uh, with the tool here. So I'll kick this one off. So. Again, I've got the same, I've got my database that I've assessed. I'm just going over to, um, into my Azure portal and I've pre-provisioned an Azure SQL database in here called AdventureWorks 2020 to differentiate the two in here that you'll see. Um, so that's that's uh, ready to go. And as you'll see uh, in a moment, that is empty. Um, I'm actually connected to it uh, using SQL Server Management, SQL Server Management Studio. Um, I'll just show you that there's no tables in this database. In fact, I'll expand on this as well to um, show you that there's no other than system tables. There's nothing, nothing in here. So back to the Azure portal now. In the uh, a, a new um, so you go into resource, create a new resource called Azure Database Migration Project. There's a standard and a premium um, options you can select when you create the service. Um, this is the standard. It's it's is it's simple to use. It's it's is free. The premium, um, you know, costs a bit more, but lets you do online migrations. So you've got a 24 by 7, 24 by 7 workload that you need to bring across. Then um, the premium is the way to go. But I wanted to keep things fairly straightforward for today um, to be able to show you this tool. And the first thing we need to do is do a schema only migration. Okay, so the schema migration is going to take the information across and pre-build all our tables. Um, I've reset up a site-to-site -site VPN to my development environment in Azure. I'm connecting to my local development machine uh, here from the Azure, Azure portal. And now let's look at my target. And this is my uh, Azure SQL database. Uh, the password in here. Now, it's because the recorder has sped this up. There is a bit of time lag that happens as trying to find these objects, but you're getting the, the speedy version today. 
And I've got my target database selected and I'm generating that schema from the source. Um, so here's a summary. So we'll give the activity a name uh, as well. This is for the schema. And I'm just going to go cross over to show you the current connections um, on my local development environment. So in terms of the host name, this VM um, item here, this is when I did that initial connection. So here's my um, source environment. Now I kick the system off. Uh, it's going to um, start, I'll refresh a few times. I'm just going to check uh, back on my local development environment. And now I've got another connection here. We start the time, CPU time. Uh, has increased, um, and so it is actually, uh, when you want to know is this thing still running, <laughs> is a good question. Um, this is one way you can, um, and you think it's not doing anything, uh, you can use that to go, is it query running, is it, is it gathering data, you can measure, measure that not only in the Azure portal, but also in the, uh, on your local, uh, local SQL Server uh, as well. So this is going to just speed up um, very quickly, and jump there by about a minute, and I'm now going to refresh my table list, and there's all my tables from my source uh, database. So they're all brought across. Okay, and now, now notice there the migration details are completed with warnings. I'm just going to stop that there. Um, remember when we did the assessment, we did the gave us a warning that um, the full text search was not compatible in, um, in going to the Azure SQL database, and so. It did actually show the objects it needs to use that uh, in here. Now, uh, again, if that if, through a test process, I would you know, go, oh, wait, I didn't realize that. I thought we weren't using that. I better test the application to see where those those uh, you know, objects might be might be used. That requires us to then um, uh, maybe remediate or think about a different strategy of, of going forward. So we'll go on now to, we'll assume this is all fine. We'll do create a uh, offline data migration. So uh, I'll do the same connections I did before in here. And while that's going on, to explain that offline data, data connection. So the offline data connection, um, uh, as you'll see uh, on the screen in a moment, I will pause again when we get to that. Uh, uh, you'll see here's a set uh, source database read only. And what you can do if you wanted to do a, a, a cut over the stage or make sure there's no loss of transactions in your Azure, um, you know, sorry, on, pre on premises SQL environment, um, is set it read only so that no more transactions can happen and you're going to have any lost, lost data if you have to fail back at this stage. So um, if you're doing online, there will be consistency going across to cut your applications over. Um, I'm not going to tick this in this example, but if, if I was using my um, you know, my dual environment is my production server, let's just say, and there were changes happening on that environment through transactions. I was sort of cut over because I thought it was okay. I would have lost a, a range of those as well. So, um, but if you've got a build you, um, uh, you know, maintenance windows and, and do this uh, and not require, you know, a 24 by 7 requirement, um, you can choose whether you use read only or not. And it'll keep it read only after the migration is finished so you don't have any loss of data. Um, now looking at the settings, all the 71 tables are in the database are selected uh, and there's no known issues. So I'm going to hit next and again, create an activity uh, a name as well and we'll get this kicked off. Now there's a note up here on the screen um, around the premium tiers of Azure SQL database. So if you've got a lot of data and you need more performance, um, it says there basically you can scale that up, do your migration and then scale it back down to a lower price tier once the migration is complete. So this is some guidance that was um, provided here also. So look at the tables. The tables are provisioned. Um, one of the larger tables is this transaction history table uh, and it's it's currently empty. If I look at my uh, development environment, uh, I'll zoom down the bottom, I call 113,000 odd rows and there is none in my destination. Just to show you that um, this is not something we prepared earlier. Um, so if we refresh this, and this does take uh, just under nine or 10 minutes from memory. Um, and you'll see the number of tables going, count tables going up as we, um, as we go through this as well. So this will get uh, a little bit quicker. Doing, doing this down in under a minute, um, this time frame. This is a good time if you, when you're doing migrations to you know, uh, take a break, monitor things. Um, 
Uh, we do see a point uh, about 61 tables or 65 tables um, that the transition history table has actually been populated and all those rows are across. I was checking it during it, it didn't flick back and forth during the recording, just to um, show, just to see when it was doing it, it was on the last, you know, the last sort of half a dozen tables that came across. And just under nine minutes is where it's completed as well. So all our tables, uh, 71 tables um, in the schema are, are there, uh, new modified dates uh, from before. And if we look at that now in our do environment, um, there's the, uh, the source as well. So everything has been migrated across. Now it's time to continue on with the, uh, you know, the testing we would do, application connections, make sure it works, uh, and then move towards a cutover as well. So I hope that was helpful to understand um, the um, uh, use of those tools. So speaking of those tools, you know, we talk about you know DMA, DMS, as you migrate. What tool is good for what purpose? Um, and so there's a few in here as well. So let's just start at the top and work our way down um, and look at that Azure Database Migration Service. So it is the best scenario for is the migration um, of SQL and Oracle databases at scale um, to either an Azure SQL database or a SQL managed instance or a SQL running on Azure VM. Um, it is um, where those investments are going more so into that service. Um, more and more. So that's the, the, the one that uh, I would recommend to use when you're moving your SQL workloads in particular. The data migration system is great for assessments and great for an upgrade from earlier versions of SQL into something newer. You can see the source and destination parameters there for that. Um, um, and it can help you as it automate that into Azure Migrate um, as well. Now the SQL Server Migration Assistant, the SSMA, is the migration complete migration for non-SQL resources. So some of you do have, um, just looking at those other technologies that you've responded to, um, there's MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and a lot of others in there. Um, also that um, uh, may, may we need to modernize. So if you wanted to then look at how we, how to modernize those, the SSMA could be a good tool to consider also. The database experimentation assistant. Um, don't see a lot of scenarios with clients needing this, uh, but if you do have bespoke applications and you want to do A-B testing for different uh, additions of SQL or different destination endpoints uh, for your database, then that's that's certainly one to consider. And uh, Azure Migrate, as I said before, uh, good for those IaaS migrations, do a lift and shift to modernize um, Windows and Linux VMs, which may have you know, SQL servers deployed on those into an Azure VM, and then you deploy that resource provider uh, I spoke about earlier to help them manage that as well. Uh, just to round out the um, uh, this portion of of the uh, of the webinar, um, the Azure Migrate program, known uh, or shortened to AMP, um, is available to all Azure customers and uh, scaled through the migration partners such as Data3. So Data3 is uh, one of four Australian-based uh, companies accredited to provide services uh, using AMP. Um, we also have accredited one of two partners in Australia um, for specialising in Windows and SQL Server migration workloads. Um, and as part of that, uh, we have access to the, all the Microsoft tools to achieve that um, uh, engineering to support us with um, different customer scenarios as well. So it gives us a backing to help do that. Uh, really, it's a play, it, it helps provide the guidance, lots of office incentives and skill building help you take advantage of um, taking your data workloads to cloud as well.